Why is it that Winston Churchill has been seen as a racist, but Karl Marx has been seen as a hero? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that, because that's one of my favorite bugbears. Um, uh, yeah, well, here's my short answer. Uh, there is an attempt to take down all of our heroes, <clears throat> all of our heroes. Winston Churchill for the British is our hero, our national hero. Only 20 years ago, when we were allowed an opportunity to vote on who the greatest Britain was, the BBC had this BBC documentary. Uh, Ten people were, were in the end up being shortlisted, I think, and people presented a program on each. And the um, and the the person who won hands down as the greatest Britain of all time was Winston Churchill, of course. Um, now in 2022, uh, even the, the BBC, whenever it runs a piece about Winston Churchill, has to run like. The case for the for the um, prosecution, right? Ten terrible things Winston Churchill did. Um, they've just it, it's been decided to recast him in a different light, and again, a very unfair light. He's accused of a lot of things he didn't do, uh, such as gassing uh, Iraqis. In fact, he and this is a Noam Chomsky lie. He actually used uh, not to get too much into the weeds, but uh, Churchill ordered the use of what we would now call tear, tear gas, gas, not mustard gas. And uh, Chomsky and others have pretended that he used mustard gas on the Iraqis. That that lie has gone around repeatedly. There are other other all sorts of other accusations against Churchill, but basically it's because um, the British uh, uh, um, love and admire Winston Churchill still. N n not everybody. There are some critics. Um, but by and large, he is our biggest national hero. And, um, you know, when the film Finest Hour came out, you know, there were lots of stories of um, people in cinemas at the end getting to their feet and feet and doing standing ovations. Um, and uh, I mean, I don't know if you feel this, but I feel it very strongly that uh, Churchill, is, it's, it's not just about him. Um, in Britain, there's a view that, and I think it's correct, that the world would certainly have um, allowed Nazism to flood across Europe and possibly to Britain if Churchill hadn't have been in place at that time. Who is it that said, this is the one time I've seen the hand of God at work in the real world? Yeah, yeah. Lord Hailsham said, it's the one time I've seen the hand of God in, uh, um, operate in politics. He felt like it just the moment that that, that Churchill being put into place at that moment was, was just a godsend. And it was. And the other thing is, of course, he, he, for all of our families in Britain, I mean, he was the rallying figure along with the king and the queen um, who showed the British people the resilience necessary to sacrifice their sons a second time within a few decades. Because he'd done, what, fought on six continents or something, or five yes. continents. He'd put yes. himself forward for he, World War One. He volunteered to fight in World War One. Great he didn't hat. didn't need to. Fantastic hat. Smoked he a lot. Smoked, drank a lot. Um, but he represented, and represents <clears throat> still for a lot of us in Britain, this a sense of what our spirit is, which is um, a difficult, belligerent, unbowed, um, uh, dogged, um, not self-pitying, um, and much more. And so why have they come for Churchill? Uh, I explain the ways in which they've come for him, but my answer as to why is because they know that it will demoralize us. Who's they? The people who hate the West in general, who hate Britain, who hate America. If you take down, they hate people like Churchill being admired. They can't bear it because they know that it's something so deep within us. Now, what is that deep thing? For me, and I think for a lot of other British people, it is the sense that we're a good country, that we did something good, that France may have given in, that with the only shots fired being against French soldiers by French soldiers, but oh, that's good, it's a cross over that. Uh, you know, the Dutch rolled over. A lot of other countries didn't have a choice and so on and so forth. But the British wouldn't. And this is because we were a good country and we faced up to bad people when we saw them. That is a very, very important feeling nationally. But if you want to stop the British feeling pride in themselves, you've got to take out Winston Churchill. In the same way, in America, 
if you hate America, you not only hate the fact the founding fathers are revered, and they've been, my God, as I say, say in the chapter on history, they've really come for the founding fathers in recent years. Now, you might say, again, there's a historical revisionism that was needed uh, 60 years ago. People in America who revered Jefferson, say, didn't necessarily know he was a slave owner. Uh, we know today, it would be nice to know something other than the fact he was a slave owner. Um, but the point is, is, if you attack the founding fathers, you attack an idea of America. If you take down Lincoln, the victor of the Civil War, and that's also happening, literally, and I've seen themselves with statues of Lincoln torn down in America. If you tear down Lincoln, you go in a similar way to attack the foundation of America. Because if you don't have Lincoln, you basically don't have America. And again, not just because he was a, a good man who won the Civil War and, and, and did this extraordinary thing, not just because of that, but also because his whole story was a story of coming from nothing and becoming president. I mean, he grew up in Abs absolute poverty, Lincoln. Probably had one year of formal education. Everything else, he was self-taught. He taught himself to read books. He was a remarkable man who imbued a spirit of America which many Americans still feel. But if you take down Lincoln, you've taken down the idea of America. Now, sorry, one other point, the quick point on that. Why don't they do it to Marx? Ah. Well, the same remorseless battle is the same remorseless attack is made on every historical figure in the West, on every philosopher of the West, every cultural hero of the West. And it's always done the same way. They lived in a time of slavery and did something to endorse it or didn't work against it enough. They lived in a time of colonialism and didn't attack it enough or benefited from it in some way. They were racist by modern standards. This is done against everybody, everybody in American history and in British history and Western history, except for Karl Marx. What a coincidence is this? Um, I, I took great delight in searching the book of finding out the, the many, many racist things that Karl Marx said. In his private letters, his private letters to Engels, he constantly uses the N-word, often uh, linked to Jew, profoundly anti-Semitic, of course, um, uh, extraordinarily bad views on slavery, on uh, colonialism, uh, everything else. Um, he, he said much more racist things than any of the people that we've discussed discussed so far, uh, including Churchill. Uh, and um, yet, weirdly, he doesn't get the same treatment. So if you take out every thinker other than Karl Marx, why would that be? Other than that you're not really just you're not really carrying out a fair critique you're carrying out a deliberately unfair critique in order to advance an existing cause the existing cause in this case is anything but westernism and marxism is one of the answers and i'm afraid that anti-westernism has always been um, whipped along by marxism ever since the benighted birth of karl marx um he, uh, even in the post-colonial era, as I say in the books, but one of the great ironies of the post-colonial era is that anti-colonialists like Fanon, who I write about, all said, we've got to get rid of Western rule in Africa. Now, you could say, well, at this point, we must return Africa to a pre-colonial time, a kind of native tradition, which would have included all sorts of traditions which would also not look very nice in the light of modern thought. Um the Obar of Benin was not a liberal democrat and uh, much more. Anyway, but the point is, you, you, they didn't say that. They, people like Fanon said, we must get the Europeans out of uh, Africa and stop the, the European colonialism and capitalism in order that we can institute Western Marxism. Well, this is an oddity at the very least. But as I say, I think it's one of these things. That the fact that people don't apply this standard to certain people and do to others is a demonstration that, we're, that they are engaging in a bad faith argument. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full, unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.